Hello everyone, my name is Kenny Cormandy and I have the YouTube channel Meyer Gun Reviews and today we're doing a review on a pellet rifle from Gammo. It is the Gammo Bone Collector Maxim. It is, this is a 22 caliber. The gun weighs 5.71 pounds. It's 45 and a half inches long. 19 and a half inch barrel. It comes with a 3 to 9 by 40 non-adjustable objective scope on their recoil reducing rail. This is a rail that the scope mount mounts to and this rear scope stops them on the solid and it's got two rubber bumpers in here that are kind of pressed onto this and on the previous gun that I tried that was so far off, I actually tried the scope from uh, the Gamo Wildcat on it because, to see if the scope was a problem. And I found that they have a jelly-like lubricant uh, in the grooves of the dovetail mount in there. It's like they actually want that uh, scope rail to move. It's got a composite stock with these uh, kind of plasticky inlays. You can see this is not uh, very well put in there. It protrudes a bit. And a black one here, the bone collector emblem. It's got Gamble's uh, CAT, uh, customizable adjustable trigger. Uh, it's got a pretty decent shaped stock. Uh, raised cheek piece for left or right handed shooters. It's got their shock absorbing uh, butt pad with the removable inserts in here. And there's a, there's a light green accent piece in there. Uh, they claim 30 pounds of cocking effort. Uh, I did not measure this one, but it feels like it's about 32 pounds. Uh, this is the second one of these I have gone through and I am pretty sure this is going to be my last Gamel review. I have pretty much had it with Gamels. I went through two Gamel Silent Cats and both of them were absolute junk. And you can see my review on the Gamel Silent Cat. At two junk ones. I got this gun in its place and the first one was absolute junk. It had decent power but it was shooting as much as three inches off center from the target in all directions. Not just you know one direction it was just way off. And the power was decent on that rifle. The power was consistent on that rifle but it would not shoot a pellet or the darn. I tried a different scope on it, ended up taking it back, getting this one, and this rifle is just defective as well. That's four consecutive defective Gamo pellet rifles, and I cannot justify doing another Gamo review unless Gamo wants to send me one for free. I'm not going to go out and get another Gamo rifle to uh, review. This one is rated at 975 feet per second shoot. The uh, Gamo PBA Platinum Alloy Ammunition and it's rated at 1300 feet per second in the 177 caliber. And they claim 17.8 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. This one I shot about 40 pellets at the target using just a generic pellet and it seemed to be grouping pretty good. So then I went into the target practice, you know, testing each pellet to see how they shot. And this gun, it shot 
the pellets okay, not real accurate. There was just two different pellets that really seemed to group well. One was the H&N Field Target Trophy and the H&N uh, Barracuda Hunter Extreme. Uh, so, you know, if you tried to use a crosswind pellet, you know, it was just very large uh, shot pattern and the H&Ns were very tight. But I was getting some tight patterns, so I thought the gun was okay. Then I went to do the crony test on the uh, alloy pellets and the RWS hobbies, you know, for a base, and then uh, crony measurements for the two pellets we're going to use for the accuracy test, and that's where I found the gun just fell flat on its face. The first uh, pellet across was the RWS Hypermax 9.9 grain, and this pellet I should have been shooting somewhere in the mid 900s at least and I had a low of 7.99 a high of 830.5 an average of 817.8 stream spread of 30.73 standard deviation 11.83 and 14.71 foot-pounds muzzle energy that initially was our most powerful pellet the first time across the crony with the RWS Hobby 11.9 grains, which it should have been shooting at about 800 feet at least. They had a low of 668.2, a high of 695.5, an average of 685.0, extreme spread of 27.3, standard deviation 10.39, 12.4 foot-pounds muzzle energy. So 4.4, 5.4 foot-pounds muzzle energy less than uh, the manufacturer claim. So I figured, okay, you got a dry chamber, put a few drops of uh, chamber lube in it, tried it again. The second round with the RWS Hypermax it was all over the place, a low of 852.1, of high 892.8, average of 875.9, over a 40 foot per second extreme spread. The RWS Hobbies after that, low of 740.1, high of 754.3, average 745.8, 14.21 foot per second extreme spread, standard deviation 5.91. We did average 14.7 foot-pounds muzzle energy with that one. That is a 2.3 foot-pounds muzzle energy increase. And then I was not feeling real good about the way the gun was shooting, so I put a couple more drops in there, shot a bunch of pellets through it, and re-ran the Hypermax again. Uh, the third time I ran the Hypermax, I did get slightly better readings. I got a low of 863.9, a high of 891.7, an average of 883.9. That's a 27.81 foot per second extreme spread, standard deviation 11.83. That did average 17.81 foot pounds of muzzle energy. And I will say that the 863.9 reading was the very first one. All the rest were up in the 880s to uh, the 891.7. So the average is probably would be better than that. And I did run the RWS Hobbies again and I got an even worse reading. 701.4 for a low, 732.6 for a high, uh, 719.4 for an average Extreme spread 31.24, uh, standard deviation 12.2. So the gun was not going to continue to shoot with the same power. Uh, the only cure for this gun appears to be a new piston seal. And after buying three gambles and returning all three, and getting another one, I'm not going to take a fourth one back to the store. 
uh, it all came from Mills Fleet Farm. I don't know if Gamble was just dumping all their lemons on Fleet Farm, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to go back and deal with them for a fourth time. So this gun, I am going to put a new piston seal in it, a uh, high-tech piston seal, and uh, see what we can really get out of this gun. Uh, I was very, very disappointed. It's a good-looking gun. As you can see, this gun's got a real live uh, muzzle brake on the front. Um, most of the air gunners, they refer to a muzzle brake as a metal add-on or plastic add-on added on to the barrel to, for ease of grip when you're breaking the brake barrel open. And that's been kind of a common term, but a uh, true muzzle brake actually redirects air to the side, or gases to the side. I'll show you a picture of a original type muzzle brake. They were originally designed for cannons to reduce the recoil. It's got a large polymer jacketed uh, barrel. Um, blued receiver and here you can see their recoil reducing system on the scope and the CAT style trigger manual safety got the bone collector emblem on it and the inlays that I showed you and uh, the removable uh, plugs on the butt pad now I told you on the uh, inlays they didn't seem to be very consistent and I don't know if you can see this or not but there's indents on the uh, cheek piece on, so the even the castings are not very consistent on this I have built a new target backstop for outdoors and I bought a new shooting bench which I have been very anxious to try so even though this rifle really isn't worthy. It's going to be my first 20 yard uh, accuracy test since I changed locations from the other place I started at in Bloomington. Let's take a look at our 20 yard accuracy test and we'll go from there. Well, this gun has some serious internal issues. Here I did get four kind of together and then one dropped way down. And you can see it didn't penetrate cleanly. It's almost like it was tumbling. And here I got three all in the bullseye and then two dropped down way low. Yeah, we're going to have to rebuild this gun. Well, those were the two most accurate pellets in the indoor 12 yard shoot. So we tried them at 20 yards and you can see as accurate as the H&M Barracuda Hunters wanted to be, this thing still kicked two of them way outside of the target zone. Uh, it's just an unstable rifle. It needs a new piston seal and so I am going to order a high-tech piston seal that's got uh, molybdenum uh, grease impregnated into the seal. It's kind of self-lubricating. It's going to give us a little better compression and uh, maybe a little more velocity. So we'll see how this rifle does after it's been rebuilt. But like I said, I will never buy another new Gamo ever again. Uh, I've, I've just... I'm washing my hands of them. 
Uh, it's a hundred and ninety nine to two hundred and nine dollar rifle everywhere and I would expect much better quality out of a rifle costing that much. So like I said, it's a light gun, it's easy to carry, the custom action trigger is very good. I did not adjust on it at all. Here you can, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, it's very light going back to the second stage. And, uh, you can shorten it, that second stage even more. So, uh, I do like the trigger, I just, I'm fed up with the performance of gamo pellet rifles, and really, really, really fed up with their quality. So, you can take your own chances if you want, but I definitely do not recommend uh, buying this rifle, especially not for the price. My name is Kenny Cormandy, and thank you for watching.